Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the uh frontline changes report. Uh not the Sibra Frontline Changes Report. Uh again, there's a lot of changes today, uh, so which is why the report uh have the Sibra have have to be split into two so the frontline uh, changes report will be posted on the main channel as per you are watching it now and the sit wrap the uh the sit wrap the situation report will be on the dpa war channel um so the first one is actually at chromaune uh so this this is the biggest news over the past 24 hours uh russian forces have captured the town of chromaune and uh, this has been confirmed by the ukrainian source deep state ua uh they have they basically the Ukrainian side has confirmed this and Ryba also have confirmed this uh, however this so both uh, Ukrainian and Russian uh, OSINT has uh, open source intelligence has confirmed the capture of Kromalny by the Russian forces uh, except that uh, this is still not announced by the Russian Defense Ministry just yet uh, so yesterday after the retraction of such a major a uh, huge amount of uh, Russian claims and then also you know uh, adding of this uh, gray zone on the from the ukrainian mapping suddenly you know half of it is already gone uh with the russians con uh launching major assault and uh, at tabaivka as well as kremalny and according to the information the ukrainian forces basically ran away from uh, kremalny as they probably cannot hold the defense uh because the the forces that is defending in this area are the territorial defense these are uh, the lesser trained troops uh and um probably worse armed uh not as well armed as the the usual assault groups that uh the ukrainian forces have the main good the good fighting forces so these forces redrew and uh you can see the the territory that they lost is hu quite huge uh within a day or two they lost around two three kilometers of in terms of the depth and uh, that is actually a lot uh, given how stagnant this war is so and uh, if the ukrainians cannot uh hold create another line of defense or they do not have another line of defense behind this the next line of defense is going to be at Tabaivka and Pishane this is going to be the, be the next line of defense and uh, probably some tree lines around all this area which is uh, as forward position but it's going to be very weak uh, if they are not prepared for this so this is quite bad and uh, so the the other so these are the, the front line change around at uh, Kromalny and uh, the the other one is over at the Adyevka front so uh, this is Adyevka front uh, at the Adyevka front uh, there's a joint location of Ukrainian forces getting hit by Russian FPV drone in the northern part of the coke plant in, at the northern part of Adyevka so with the Ukrainian forces uh, joint located here this means that the Ukrainian forces have basically uh, retaken this position some time ago is unknown when so this is actually a Ukrainian capture however this is the only one in all the uh, frontline changes of uh, the past 24 hours so this is just a consolation in, in view of the bigger things because the Russian forces are having a lot of uh, progress uh, over these past 24 hours the next one is over here on the northeastern or eastern part of Adyevka front in the Kayamka region so the Russian forces have uh, continued their attack over from Kayamka and they have basically crossed the valley and go up to the Dacha re uh, region uh, east of this uh, lake P uh, Kaya Piso Chinese Kaya I, pro I probably started the name so and in this area here I can actually this area is very uh, the geography is a bit interesting um, so there's so this is Adyevka. Uh, so this is Adyevka, uh, in case you do not know. So you can see this is the lake. So this is the region that the front line has changed. If you zoom, you go in, you can see how how this this is actually a valley region, and the Russian forces basically have went down this valley and went up, and on, onto the high ground on the other side. So this is actually quite significant, uh, because this usually should be a strong point uh, that prevents russian forces from attacking but uh if the russian forces basically cross over onto the other high ground then the attack will be going through to the plateau region and uh, this is going to be uh yeah much more easier for the russians to continue to push through into the other forest line where the ukrainians probably have their next line of defense so this is actually uh quite bad and the russians really love water bodies because they can actually form defensive lines along these water bodies and it looks like this is going to be where the Russian forces are going to be pushing through at. So going back to this mapping, um, so 
uh, in case you do not know where we were just now. So this is the water body. Uh, this is the water body. The Russian forces will try to link up all this water body and and attack and and close up and shorten the front line. So from there, they can actually launch assault into Adyevka itself and close down to the next line onto the eastern part of Adyevka. So this, this is actually very significant because this valley should be a strong point for the Ukrainians, but it looks like they have neglected that part or they may not have sufficient forces to deal with this so the next frontline change is over at Krodabalka so this is actually more like a disclaim from the Ukrainian side the deep state UA the pro-Ukrainian force basically gave up uh, previously the line frontline looks something like this but in their latest mapping it looks like they have considered the entire ground around Krodabalka and the frontline is now along this water body around here so which means that the Russian forces uh, over the past 24 hours or 48 hours have actually progressed out of Krodabalka and secured the entire western part of Krodabalka. So this is actually uh, quite significant. Uh, the other significant point is the southern part. This is actually where the most so-called exciting place is, where the Russians actually uh, have made a breakthrough and they are heading towards uh, this, this region called, uh, I also don't know, how, know how, what, how, what to call it, uh, uh, along the Sportiva, Sportivina Street. So they are head, supposedly attacking into this region here. This is actually all grey zone right now. And the latest report basically suggests that the Russians have confirmed uh, the capture of Saska Ohota, or basically this uh, this this restaurant region uh, around this area here. This is claimed by the, or uh, this confirmed by Deep State UA. The Deep State UA, the pro-Ukrainian source, have confirmed this. And then it was... Uh, corroborated by the Russian side. So we have both Ukrainian and Russians confirming the Russian capture of this position. And uh, along with that, uh, uh, Deep State UA's mapping also shows that the Russian forces have also progressed. So not, not just attacking in this direction towards the, the suburb, but the Russian forces have also closed up this entire area and attacked into the Skotovata region or this, this Dacha or you know, suburb region in this area here and of course uh, also in within the vineyard the full capture of the entire vineyard uh dacha region and uh, according to raiba they he, they say that they have reports that the there's a possibility that the russian forces have captured the entire of the skotovata uh, uh region so there is a possibility that the russians have also confirmed the capture of this area and if this is true which means that the entire ukrainian front line uh around this area and around the Skodovata as per I have mentioned around a week or so ago that this is a this is actually too remote and if the Russian push this way they have to redraw and this is probably what we see uh, and yesterday I did mention that if the Russians continue to push through the forces here will redraw regardless because this is untenable they will be encircled and this is this is exactly what we are looking now this area is very very heavily uh, entrenched because that this is actually the the front line of the silver war the ukrainian silver war and uh and if you if i zoom in you're going to see some trench line within this forest region for example you can see there is already some trench line around here you can see these trench lines and uh, there's further more trench lines around here more here so this this entire region is very very heavily defended which is why i'm kind of surprised with this Russian push so quickly into this area here because there's a major entrenchment in this position there's major entrenchment in this area here and this area there's heavy entrenchment all over the place so the Russian push in this area is actually very significant because you lose all this entrenchment and very soon you're going to run out of entrenchment to the rear as you can see there's not much entrenchment behind uh, this is basically where the final line of defense is going to be before fighting goes into a uh, close quarter combat and it's going to be uh buck mood once again so uh so this is the situation uh over at the southern part of adfk and uh the other frontline change is over at yogifka uh over on the western part of marinka so the latest update suggests that the russian forces have uh pushed in the northern part of Gyokivka and managed to establish a new front line. The fr the change in terms of the front line is not much. It's gonna is is around. Let me measure. I press the wrong tool. Around 100, 100 over meters. 
130 meters but if you follow ukrainian mapping it's going to be like 300 meters to 400 meters so depending on you following following the russian or the ukrainian one if you follow the ukrainian one the loss of territory is actually much bigger because the russian claims are more advanced uh well the ukrainian claims was actually much more you know deeper towards marinka so this is currently happening and the russian forces is also definitely pushing in the south and there is a geolocation of ukrainian forces uh just off in, uh, the front line that is established in our mapping right now uh this is uh, geolocated by Kremlin Caprice of Ukrainian forces getting hit by FPV drones. So this actually established where the front line is. So the Russians are making this push uh, towards the northern part. And it is looking quite critical because this, this has been creeping. This front line has been creeping. Uh, even in Marinka, such front line change uh, in, in uh, this one to two weeks is uns is not is not is unheard of basically because marinka has always been very very stagnant every push uh, every frontline change is very very hard earned but this crew this creep uh in the north is way faster than in marinka so uh this is actually shows the difference between marinka's defenses versus geogifka geogifka is not as entrenched as marinka is so the final the final frontline change is over at uh, Uruzaini. There is a Joe location over at this uh, tree line. Oops, at this tree line, at this position. Uh, this Joe location came after I actually mapped this in because this is actually uh, uh, drawn by uh, Deep State UA uh, of the Russian capture of this position. They, the Russian basically have attacked at Uruzaini as per reported yesterday, and they made they, uh, this is probably confirmed through the Joe location, and Deep State UA probably had this Joe location. And uh, actually, I, sh I should change this front line uh, in case I forget. So, oh no, I didn't change this front line. That's for a reason. Because this is actually uh, a, a geolocation of the front line. So, a front line. The, the, the video that is associated to this uh, geolocation shows a failed Russian attack. So, the Russians basically attacked to this position, but then they, they did not work out. So, which is why there is still, still this uh, overlapping claims uh, as a result of this. So, this is why I'm, I, I say this. I put it in this way. And yeah, why did why did my map changes uh, disappear? So, it should be like this. So, there will be a Russian and Ukrainian uh, mapping overlap. So, uh, denoting, uh, denoting, that, uh, denoting that there is actually a, a, a gray zone uh, between that place. So, this is the frontline changes. Uh, over in the Ukraine war, do look out for the SIP rep that will come uh, soon after uh, because I'm recording the frontline changes first, posting it on the main channel, then I will be doing the SIP rep and posting on the DPA war channel. Check out the DPA war channel for the strategic picture and the tactical situations around all the different front lines. And uh, thank you for watching. Do press the like button and remember to subscribe uh, because I'm I want to I want the main channel to go to 100k. So you know. So I need your help and I'll see you guys in the next update.